but not everybody agrees with that. That's the cool thing about having a Jeep is you can make it your own. What is up guys? Welcome back to the second version of the walk around on Big Sauce. Yes, that's its new name, named it Big Sauce JK. Here she is guys, this is how she sits right now. Had a lot of major stuff going on lately. Thought it was a pretty good time to make a video. So I'll start off by telling you the year and everything like that. It's a 2013 Sport, has an automatic transmission, stock axles, front and rear, Dana 30, Dana 44, 373 gears. Yes, those are the stock gears. I thought the Jeep had 321s when I first got it and I was not gonna do 37s. But when I found out, I looked up the VIN number on Jeep's website to see what it was equipped with. It turns out it had 373s. So that's when I pulled the trigger on the 37s. I don't plan on re-gearing until I go to 40s, which will be a while. I just do a lot of around town driving in this thing, so it's not that big of a deal. It does really good with acceleration compared to like a four cylinder and a TJ with 35s. So as you guys would know, the 2013 does have the 3.6 liter V6. So it has a good bit more power, more efficient, all that stuff. And I'll start off by telling you guys the stuff on the body that I've changed before I get into like the aftermarket upgrades. So the Jeep came with a black diamond material, soft top, you know, the just your basic soft top. That, and then I got a hard top and I had that for a while as you guys have seen on the previous walk around video. And then I ended up finding this twill top. Got a super good deal on it. I'm really liking the way it looks. It's just the dark fabric, you know, it's the premium, best top, soft top material. It's a little dirty from being outside, but It just really brings the whole Jeep together because it's just nice and dark like the paint. It also has an option to where you can unlatch it and just flip it back like a sunroof or the sunrider option. Put this little gas cap on there. That's not nothing too crazy right there. And as you guys have seen before, I have cut my pinch seam. It's just turned back just enough on the body where it doesn't get into the actual body itself. Just enough pinch seam to be removed as possible. So that way I don't have any issues with flexing or anything with clearance wise. The Jeep did come with the side steps, but I had to take those off because I trimmed these uh, Sahara factory fender flares. So as you guys can tell, I trimmed these. A lot of people ask me about these fender flares and what I did was I measured about three inches from this line right here. Not this line, but this line measured three inches back put a piece of tape uh, parallel with the body so it tapers in. And then once I got to the bend, I just tapered it in to that same line right here. I cut it with a Dremel because the Dremels are more controlled. They you know, they're not like a Sawzall where it just shakes the whole fender. And then I got some weather stripping from the auto parts store that has adhesive on the inside and just sticks on there for a clean edge. For the rears, I had those cut similar to the front, just the same method. I got kind of tired of that because I had a good bit of stance up here, not so much back here. So what I did is I cut it on that same factory line, you know, just taped it off parallel with the body, hit it with a Dremel and then put the weather stripping on it. Factory tail lights, I did tint mine beforehand, uh, smashed them on a tree at the off-road park. So 
put some uh, stock ones back on there. It looks really clean to me. Took the factory decals off on this side. And on this side, I still left the true badge just for a, a clean factory look. You know, nothing too crazy. It leaves the, the body kind of dark looking. So, you know, nothing stands out like the Wrangler Sport logo. I do like the factory badges right here. I think those make it look, you know, like the original Wrangler. I think it has a lot to do with, you know, just the trademark of the vehicle. So I might end up putting those back on but I am liking this clean look right here. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I like to keep the body very clean. So, you know, no crazy light bars, no hood logo, nothing like that. Just to keep it sleek and clean like the original Wrangler. Pretty much just how it came off the dealership lot, you know, just more sub performance upgrades. So, you know, have the stock headlights. But yeah, the Jeep came with the amber blinkers. I swapped them out for the Mopar original clear lenses. I think those look a lot cleaner. Still have the factory windshield with those little decals up there oh, in the corner. Oh, and the uh, factory hood latches. I think those also look the best. But not everybody agrees with that. That's the cool thing about having a Jeep is you can make it your own. A little bit more on the body here. So I swapped out this steering wheel. I used to have the uh, styrofoam looking, kind of cheap looking material. I swapped it out for the Mopar leather steering wheel. It came off of a parts Jeep. We have a video on that if you guys are interested in watching how to do a swap. So I'll go ahead and do the interior. So the only thing my Jeep is missing um, options from the factory wise are, you know, your power windows and locks. But that's not a huge deal to me because it's just less electronics and stuff, you know, weight wise and just stuff that could possibly end up breaking in the future with, you know, mud, water, etc. And it's more like an original Jeep too. So trying not to overdo the interior, you know, just to keep it nice and clean how it came. So I've got the Rugged Ridge floor mats. I've got these uh, guard protectors off Amazon, pretty cheap. Just stick them on. Factory seats. I love the factory seats. Uh, in 2011, they updated the interior to the new style dash and all of that, but they still had the older model seats. They had them wrapped in the newer dark cloth. So that was in 2011 and 2012. So in 2013, they started adding these new molded style seats, which is what's in like all the way up to the 2018 JK. And I really like these seats a lot because they're pretty comfortable and they look good. The Jeep came with the factory black shifter knobs. I swapped those out with the Mopar original uh, chrome pieces. I painted my interior pieces gloss black to kind of even things out. With the roll cage being green, I didn't want you know the gray pieces offsetting it. Got my Alien Sunshade trail pouch thing. It's pretty sick. This thing comes in a lot of handy because there's hardly anywhere to put anything in the Wrangler. As you guys are aware, there's not a whole lot of places to put like your wallet and stuff like that. So, you know, this pouch right here is just easy accessible. You know, your passengers can use it or whatever. I've got my toolkit for the Jeep that came with it. So yeah, that's really cool. It's nice and sturdy. Got this Antenna X right here off Amazon, like 20 bucks. Looks pretty cool. A lot of people have those. So I think that pretty much covers it for the body. Now we can start moving on to the body upgrades, the aftermarket ones like bumpers and stuff like that. So the front bumper, here we have a Poison Spider BFH. That stands for Bill for Hammers. Um, if you guys aren't aware of the King of the Hammers off-road event, they do some pretty crazy stuff out there, like crazy rock bouncing stuff. So this is a frame chop bumper. As you guys have seen in the previous walk arounds, I explained how I had to cut the frame for it on that. I got that powder coated gloss black to match the body. I still need my D-ring isolators right here, the, the black ones to kind of hide some of that green right there so it's not so bright. So that's the front bumper. On the rear here we have a DV8 tire carrier. It's a TC1 model. Body mounted tire carrier. I was debating on getting this DV8 tire carrier versus the Genrite tire carrier. And the reason I went with this one was because it was cheaper and 
I saw potential in it because I didn't really like how it looked when it came with the crinkle black powder coat and those uh, plates all around it. Really wasn't a fan of that. So I did some research and I compared it to the Genrite Tarek carrier. I ended up cutting out all the brackets, all the tubes, all the plates, everything like that. So I was able to make it look exactly like a Genrite carrier. So that was another reason why I went with the DVA is because I could get it powder coated gloss black and cut out all those brackets to make it look like the Genrite Tarek carrier. As you guys can see, I have the matching spare. I do have these upgraded larger pins, these pull pins. Got those from Tractor Supply. We also have a video on installing this tire carrier if you guys are interested in watching that. It's got the poison spider, tramp stamp, delete cover. I still have my tramp stamp under there as you guys can see. Alrighty guys, that's pretty much it for the body upgrades, you know, as far as bumpers and all that go. Plans for the future. I'd I do plan on getting like a rear Evo delete cap just to kind of clean it up. But I really do favor the look of no rear bumper plus all the weight back there. It just helps not to have the bumper to save weight for the tie carrier and all that. I just think it cleans it up and has a lot of clearance without a rear bumper so it looks really good. And I like to be able to see the top of the axle too, it looks pretty sick. Do have this factory J hook right here. Probably will remove this just because it scrapes and stuff, as you guys can see right there. So when I get that Evo Dilly cap, it'll have inserts for D rings right there. So for the tires and wheels, we have Nito Trail Grapplers, 37 by 1250 R17. These are one of my favorite tire. I've always wanted these tires ever since I've had a Jeep. Finally got them, so I was able to try them out. guys can see the size right there so the wheels we have method 17 by eight and a half nv non-b locks so these are the simulated b locks this hardware is grade eight and it is removable and to give me the stance that i have i have synergy five and a half lug pattern 1.75 inch thick hub centric wheel spacers and I did black those out so it wouldn't offset any of the coloring scheme. Alrighty guys, so now that we've discussed the wheels and tires, we can get into some suspension right now. So for springs, I have metal cloak, three and a half inch true duals. So this top portion right here, when you flex and droop, it'll extend out a lot more so you're able to flex without the coil falling out. I still need to get more bump stops. Those are only two inch. I need three inches because of my Synergy flip steer kit, this drag link. I need three inch bump stops so it'll keep this drag link from hitting on the frame right here when I flex. Here I've got a rock crawler mid arms, all eight adjustable arms, different from the last video. You guys saw that I had just the drop brackets, which worked okay for just driving around town, but you know, having all eight adjustable arms really does make a huge difference. When you're able to get it aligned, and have your caster set perfect. The install on those control arms wasn't too bad because obviously they're just bolted in so it was not a long arm or anything like that. So once I got those in, I was able to drive it down the street to my local four wheel parts and I had them align it. So they got my caster set in as best as they could get it with the stock axle. Drives amazing now, handles great. On the rear arms, they didn't have to adjust those because I was able to get those in spec. I set the rears to the length for flat fenders for three and a half inches of lift. And those were on the online instructions. Those were a little bit different than the instructions that came with it. And I had to shorten my rear uppers to adjust my pinion angle because the track bar bracket was hitting on the shock. So, you know, I just turned the axle this way. Got that dialed in. So give you a better view on these control arms here. You got the flexible joints, so when the axle articulates, those joints articulate as well to give you max flex. These are the new model uppers, so they are straight instead of curved, so they're much easier to adjust. And on the front uppers, they have two jam nuts. 
one right there and the one right there we have an install video on that too if you so go. for shocks we just got these fox performance 2.0 series really clean shock rides amazing it's the same shock as the reservoir shocks it just does not have the reservoir so it doesn't have as much travel but they still have a ton of on down travel you know it's kind of like a machined aluminum body here very high quality shock for now i only have the brake line drop brackets those are rubicon express pretty cheap just to get the job done in the 2011 newer jk's i was told that the brake lines are longer than the previous models so with these brackets i think i'm good on the front for now steel lines would look a lot better i'm definitely going to get extended steel lines for the rear with that steel braided brake line popping out right there so for the track bar we have a rock crawler adjustable track bar i think it's an older model i got it used for my friend i have that adjusted all the way in for the synergy flip bracket that raised it up three inches to compensate for the drag length flip from being down here it's up there so for the sway bar we have jks quick disconnects really awesome disconnects i really do recommend these so you just pull this pin pull that pin slip this off do that on both sides pull the sway bar back and you're ready to flex very easy to do very simple saves a lot of time and a lot of energy when you're trying to go hit the trails but yeah jks disconnects are definitely worth the money they look the best and perform the best in my opinion so with the sway bar disconnected you know you're able to have the axle flex and articulate at full potential as you guys can probably see i do not have any axle upgrades so i don't have any c gussets i don't have a truss just yet i do wheel my jeep i do not abuse it though so i mean you guys can check out the videos that we have on the channel if you want to get an idea of how strong this axle actually is but i mean worst case scenario you know with the dana 30 and 37s is you know i bend it and i just get to upgrade the axle so I do plan on upgrading this axle, you know, putting on sea gussets in a truss as funds allow it. But I also do plan on getting like a strong aftermarket 44 for when I go to 40s in the future. But that won't be for a while. I do like the look and performance of 37s, especially when you air them down. They can do just about anything, in my opinion. Still have the stock tie rod, as you guys can tell. I'm gonna be upgrading that soon. Probably gonna go with the Synergy to match the drag link. Just whatever, who has the best price and the best products available. Stock tie rod's not bent just yet, so I'm still making use of it. We have a Fox steering stabilizer to match the shocks. And that does cause it to pull to the left a little bit, just so you guys are aware. But I heard that it does even out and find its center eventually. Also have the stock axle shafts. I do not plan on upgrading the axle shafts. So if I'm out on the trail and I snap something in my axle, I would rather be replacing an axle shaft than grenade the differential. So for the exhaust setup, I just have no exhaust. It sounds pretty good, but for the main reason why I took that out was for clearance. As I mentioned before, you know, you can see the top of the axle, which is really cool to me. So I want to smash them on rocks and stuff like that too. I do really like the AFE exhaust that JKU Inferno we just put on his we have a video on that as well on the engine bay not much has changed since the first video it's still factory in stock like how I try to keep it you know to prolong the life of it as you guys can tell it's got some pollen on it I try not to get water or anything in here just so many electronics and stuff like that bearings and seals and all that so I try to keep mud and water out of that if there ever is water on it, if I ever do rinse it off occasionally, I take a, a leaf blower and I blow dry that out and let it air dry for the day. Make sure the engine bay is nice and dry. Only thing I have hooked up to my battery are my rock lights and these two wires just go all back through here. I know some people like to call this Jeep a mall crawler, but I do spend a lot of time and effort in there. underneath the Jeep as you guys have probably seen on the video of how I, on how I wash it. So right now on the frame, I've just got it coated with some trim shine. And 
and on the axles i had some chips from being off-road i had some rock chips on there so i taped off you know everything that was not part of the axle and i touched it up with some vht which is like factory uh, mopar paint frame paint it's called roll bar and chassis paint and if there was any overspray or anything like that i just took some acetone and wiped it off so i was able to have everything looking brand new and i only touched up paint on the axles you know didn't want to do the frame i wanted that i wanted to keep that fresh um like how it came from the factory until it needs it years later i do still have stock drive shafts front and rear i'll have those in until they break i will need a, a new rear drive shaft here pretty soon just because you know the axle is pushed back a good bit so plans for the future i do plan on getting the poison spider crusher narrow flares the stock ones work for now. I think they look pretty good. And then upgrade, you know, just the axle. So as I go off road more and then the tie rod. So that'll be here pretty soon. Yeah, guys. So we're sitting on a three and a half inch lift, 37s. Got the poison spider, synergy, method, rock hard four by four, DV8. Good bit of rock crawler in there. I hope you guys enjoyed this walk around slash update video. Subscribe and like for more. Get you guys the best content coming.